Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and uncharacteristically perhaps for this channel, I want to start this video with a little bit of ranting and whining, prompted by the prompt for day 10 of 31 Days of Comics. 31 Days of Comics is the game that we've been playing on this channel, previous episodes available in the playlist linked below and on the top right corner of your screen. And I think we've been having a pretty good time so far. The prompts have been interesting, elicited good discussion, but all that seemingly ends today because day 10 asks us for the most beautiful scene in any comic. Where do I even start with this prompt? It's terrible. It's absolutely horrible. In fact, let's unpack all the ways it's terrible. Let's take it word by word. The Immediately we are in trouble. The definite article means that there's a definite answer. There can be only one. Previous day's prompts have included a comic you'd recommend to anyone, a gorgeous comic, a great love story, a comic that blew your mind. Oh, the indefinite article meant that we had to pick one from what would have been a variety of choices. The fact that date tense prompt not only asks for but assumes that there is a definite answer to this question is the first problem. As we move on, we get to most beautiful, a superlative on top of the definite article, which means that we have to find the number one ranked item. Now, we have had on previous episodes your favorite comic and the first comic you ever put pursued two other prompts that were very definite. And yes, we did say your favorite comic, the very first category was starting us off with a very difficult choice. But the first comic you pursued is chronological fact. So the definiteness of the answer there was something that was set in stone. It was part of history. But the most beautiful means that we have to apply this definite superlative thing to something so ambiguous. Because as we've discussed in previous days of comics, the words beauty or beautiful could encompass so many things. With a gorgeous comic, I took a more visual leaning. With a mind-blowing comic, I took a more craft-oriented leaning, which were allowed by those terms. But the vagueness or really the largeness of the word beautiful, frankly, already leaves me in paralysis and I'm only halfway through the prompt. Next, we have the word scene, which is really the most interesting word in this entire category. But interesting still comes with its complexity. What makes a scene and what makes a scene in a comic? Do we use the traditional stage or film definitions of it? Or in comics, because time and setting work very differently, does it have different dimensions? At least that's a thing we can wrestle with. But then the prompt continues in any comic, which once again means we're casting our net as wide as possible to find something that can be only one. The entire thing is ridiculous. Okay. Now that I've gotten all of that off my chest, let me address this prompt and try to refit it into something that is usable, at least for me. So first of all, how am I going to reconcile my non-ranking, non-charting, non-numerical score giving nature to a question that wants the most beautiful scene? I'm going to go the way that I know most of us go in a lot of these categories, which is to say, this is what I'm picking now at this very moment for this very video on this very day. Ask me tomorrow and it could be different. That's going to be my resistance to this insistence that even within one subjective opinion, there is a number one. So for all intents and purposes, I'm editing this to a beautiful scene. Of course, you in expressing your choices in the comments below are free to take a superlative, a non-superlative, a temporary, whatever approach you want. That's taken care of the superlative. How am I going to address the word beautiful? In translating the word beautiful, I'm not going to focus on something that's a component like the beauty of the art or the gorgeousness of the layouts or the cleverness of the writing. I'm really going to focus on the word scene and therefore take the storytelling approach. A beautiful scene for me is something that does beautiful storytelling. And as for the word scene, there I'm going to say, sure, cast your net as wide as possible. I can think of one panel scenes. I can think of one page scenes. I can even think of an entire book that technically qualifies as one scene. The last part in any comic, that part of it is really part of that superlative, the most beautiful scene in any comic. It's not really setting any new boundary that 31 days off comics hasn't already set. It's just trying to hype up that superlative. And since I've abandoned that superlative, I abandoned this part as well. However, now I'm left with a great scene, which is okay, but it seems a little flat. In order to recommend comics, I really enjoy without 
amping them up to such a level that the reader will only have disappointment. I never want my volume to be that high. In order to do that, I like breaking things into categories so it gives me more things to talk about. So I could break the ocean of great scenes out there into great first encounters between characters or great chase scenes. And for today's prompt, I started thinking about the scene that ends a story. And I decided today that my pick would be not just of a great scene in a comic, but a great final scene, a great last page in a comic. Once again, this is not something you have to follow. You're free to pick any scene you want as your choice. This is just a secondary parameter I've given to narrow things down for myself. I say narrow it down, but there's a fantastic list of contenders out there. Once again, I find myself with the possibility of making a top 10 fantastic last pages list, given the wealth out there. There. Last pages can encapsulate everything that has come before, redefine or recontextualize everything that has come before, and also leave you with an echo resonating long after your reading is over. And over here, I've also noticed that shorter pieces, single volume pieces that are closer to short stories or poems than they are to novels or epics, I've noticed that these works tend to have last pages that punch quite differently from the last pages of long series. And I think because long series have a completely different approach to storytelling. You're getting payoffs and resolutions and character development in ebbs and flows over a large period of time. Just numerically, you've got many more scenes carrying the weight of the story. And the impression the story makes on you is averaged out over many more scenes. And two final pages in my long list of excellent final pages, terrific final scenes, are from two extremely slim works. In my video on a gorgeous comic, I did show the final panel of Jason's I Killed Adolf Hitler, and that entire last page culminating in that panel with that one line of conversation is one of my all-time favorites. It's all of those things I refer to, the encapsulation, the redefining, and the echo of the entire story before that last page that gives the page its power, not just by itself. There's also that one final sentence, which is not a pun and it's not even wordplay really. It's a perfect use of a commonly known phrase for forgiveness that takes on incredible depth in this time travel relationship story. But I Killed Adolf Hitler wasn't my pick for that day and it isn't my pick for this one either. This might be my insurance against it not being one of the 31 picks that we'll end up with at the end of this month. So at least this way I'm giving it it's due. But my pick for the most beautiful scene in any comic or a great scene or a great last page is the last page of Ghost World written and drawn by Daniel Klaus. Ghost World's teenage protagonists and their worldviews do skirt the line of being perhaps too alienated and too sarcastic against everything else around them in the world to first appear as empathetic characters. But the vignette-ish approach of the story, comprising these short pieces that were originally published many months apart, slowly builds these characters and prevents them from ending up as one note. And the last page with all its emptiness and sadness, but still optimistic view of the future, all encapsulated in seven panels in a nine panel grid and one line of speech, which may as well be interior thought, encapsulates and amplifies this story fantastically. This has been a personal favorite page within a personal favorite story of mine for many years. And it did occur to me that maybe I've changed and maybe I will look at this story and this ending differently. But quickly reading through this entire book just before making this video, I can safely say that as aggravating as today's prompt may have seen, I'm absolutely happy classifying the last page of Daniel Klaus's Ghost World as a beautiful comic scene. That's my pick. What do you think about my outrage and my working through of this? And how would you approach such a ridiculous prompt? This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.